So let me uh, kind of cover it this way then. I think, uh, so I linked a small angle approximation, but that's not quite as uh, relevant, although you know, watch it, it's a it's good thing for you to know, but it's not quite as, um, I think it, uh, um, you can do vast majority of the derivation here without uh, relying too much on the small angle approximation. Um, let me try to see what gap really needs to be filled in. And I will fill in that gap and I will cover, um, uh, cover what it needs to be um, covered in addition. Let's see. Maybe I can do this kind of um, do an impromptu read a lot of session where I'm uh, reading through this section of the textbook that drives centripetal acceleration and um, see if I can fill in any gaps I see and maybe make sense of uh, what's here. And uh, I do have something that I do want to cover that uh, beyond what's in the textbook that will help you uh, answer pre-lab questions. But um, there's a good chance that might not necessarily have to tie in with the lecture videos that are available here. So let me just uh, go through the textbook. Um, so, yeah, uniform circular motion is a specific type of motion in which an object travels in a circle with a constant speed. Um, it is remarkable um, that points on these rotating objects are actually accelerating, although the rotation rate is constant. So, in, um, this is kind of a reminder, uh, in one-dimensional kinematics, Wait, I guess it's not actually a reminder. Yeah, it's chapter four, so <laughs> it's uh, something you hopefully will remember reading when we are doing chapter four. Um, so one dimensional, so in two and three dimensional kinematics, even if the speed is a constant, the particle can have acceleration if it moves along a curved trajectory such as a circle. So the way the acceleration is happening is through change of the direction. In this case, the velocity vector is changing. And it's shown in this figure here. Um, as the particle moves counterclockwise in this, uh, in time delta t on this circular path, so this example of motion. So imagine particle moving from this point to this point here, it's moving counterclockwise. So over that duration of time delta t, it's uh, the displacement is delta R here. And um, you can see that comparing the uh, tangential velocity here with the tangential velocity here, that, um, that the direction of tangential velocity has changed. So the velocity has changed. And it's this figure here, part B, that's showing that. It's showing the change of velocity in terms of the geometric parameters here. Uh, yeah, I think if I read along, you will see. Um, yeah, the position vector moves from uh, R of T, uh, yeah, the velocity vector has constant magnitude and is tangent to the path as it changes from v at time t here, down here, to v at time t plus delta t, changing its direction only. Since the velocity vector v is perpendicular to the position vector r, oh, right, this is what it's showing. Let me draw the annotation um, as a kind of um, reminder of what it's talking about. It's talking about this uh, perpendicular direction here. Um, so, uh, 
the last vector is perpendicular to the position vector, the triangles formed by the position vectors and delta R, and the velocity vectors and delta V are similar. Yeah, this is what it's getting at. So I think that's the gap I uh, need to fill. So it's uh, referring to this triangle here, which is the triangle formed by the, the position vectors, um, R of T, and R at some time later by delta T, and this uh, difference vector, delta R. And it's uh, able to make this claim that uh, this triangle is similar to this triangle here by noting that this angle here is the same, and this is how it says that. Let me draw, try drawing some auxiliary figures. So I'm going to draw a copy of this velocity vector down here and um, kind of extending this line. Here it should be perpendicular just as the angle here is perpendicular. So what that says here is that um, the the angle here um, is, let's see, um, this angle here, it's part of this right triangle, um, so it should be 90 degrees minus delta theta, because it's uh, the other uh, half of the angle that's not 90 degrees. So, uh, what, it, what I can say here is, because this is 90 degrees here, the remaining angle here, I can say that this angle here is 90 degrees, that's a this angle, minus this angle, 90 degrees minus delta theta. So uh, canceling out this 90 degrees, I get delta theta. So I, I guess I don't really need to prove that these two angles are the same. What I want to show is this fact that the angle here is equal to delta theta. And that's what's labeled here. And once you have, um, so this triangle here has two sides. It's an isosceles triangle with an angle here. And what I have here with the triangle of the delta, uh, triangle of the velocity vectors is that it's another isosceles triangle with an angle between that's the same angle as that. And that's the geometric basis on which it says that these two triangles are similar. Okay. Um, all right, so having uh, filled in the gap, <laughs> let me continue reading. Um, so these two triangles shown here are similar. And uh, furthermore, since, uh, um, um, yeah. uh, from these facts, we can make the assertion that uh, delta V over V is equal to delta R over R, with the ratio of the two sides of uh, similar triangles remain the same. And from this equation here, they can say that solving for delta V, delta V is equal to V over R times delta R. And um, in the textbook derivation, they are going to um, use this geometric factor derived to finish their um, derivation of centripetal acceleration formula. I, I think uh, when I did this lecture in fall 2017, I took a different path. So, yeah. so now they are finally finding the magnitude of acceleration. So starting out with the, the instantaneous acceleration is the limit where delta t goes to zero, change in velocity over delta t is equal to, and they are plugging in what they derived for delta v there. Uh, v over r times the delta r. So um, v over r times, so what they 
initially had is um, um, so limit of delta t going to zero v over r times delta r over delta t and this v over r it's not limited by it well it's not affected by this limiting procedure that's why they are able to take it out to get this and they have this limit of delta r over delta t and that is um, that is velocity again they write this as a v and they end up with a v squared over r yeah so i guess the textbook derivation doesn't use a, a small angle approximation at all i probably need to make a separate video for how i did it last uh, last time yeah so so yeah this is the textbook um, derivation of the centripetal acceleration formula and you know, it, this is one of those formulas that I ask you to memorize and kind of use it having memorized. So uh, the exact derivation, how you arrive at it is not super important. Um, you need to remember the formula. Uh, 